friends and welcome to Saturday Evenings Posted Mostly Weekly Broken News with your host, Trevor Stewart. Thank you, Nick. You're welcome. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Weekly Broken News with me, your host, Trevor Stewart. I am not a journalist. This is not a news show. And all of the opinions expressed herein are 100% correct and verifiable as opinions. This evening, we're also starting uh, to record in front of a live studio home audience. So, Everybody at home, say hello to our live studio home office audience. Hello. This evening, let's begin with a story from everywhere. Jim Jordan steps on own toes and shakes foundations of the GOP by magging conservatives to vote for him in a valiantly unsuccessful attempt at third vote for House Speakership, not having learned anything from Kevin McCarthy. On a side note, it is interesting to me how the name McCarthy in Congress is not synonymous with what one would think of as good things. Anyway, little Kevy McCarthy had lost the confidence of the radical arm of his party by deigning to work with Democrats to avoid a shutdown of the government in order to keep his constituents from losing benefits. In retrospect, he seems a, a more palatable choice than Jimmy Jordan, but apparently not as popular as Patrick McHenry, who is the political equivalent of a shrug of indifference. Meh. I haven't seen two people lose a popularity contest like this since Ted Cruz and Ron DeSantis entered a wet t-shirt contest, and the real loser was the audience. Next up, from News 4 JAX. A $1.4 million speeding ticket surprised a Georgia man before officials clarified the situation. We're assuming the man was white because he wasn't forced to pay the full amount through incarceration and legal slavery, and he also wasn't shot. Georgia officials say that the placeholder number isn't supposed to scare people into court. But it's just there from the software holding the number in, uh, in expectation of court. Moving right along, a news from the Associated Press, a Chicago woman at 104 skydives from a plane aiming for a record as the world's oldest skydiver. No, she was aiming for the ground. She's quoted as saying age is just a number, and at her age, it's a three-digit number. Although I really should be careful about uh, making fun of people for their age, I'm getting awfully close uncomfortably close to three digits myself. I'm not going to tell you what uncomfortably close is. And moving right along to a segment that's an old favorite here called Escaped Animals or Ark on the Lamb. A story from the Huffington Post. Large pig named Fred captured after days of low-level crimes. Okay, who squealed on Fred? That's the headline. No one here wrote that joke. 
and we are relatively proud of that. Thank you. Our question is, who convinced Fred to take part in the swine spree in the first place? We received an unofficial report that the GAFF, the GAF, Global Animal Freedom Fighters, will be supplying his legal counsel via the Cassillary Group. Our next story of animal entanglement is from the Daily Express from Down Under. Ex-cop punches terrifying seven-foot kangaroo that was trying to drown his scared dog. In this corner, we have overgrown rage rabbit, the mean marsupial, a bouncing basher, and a leaping lacerator, the rage in Roo, facing off against Maloney, the Melbourne marauder, and his pup, Hutchie. After a long battle where Maloney left the ring limping and beaten, the Raging Roo took home the dub once it got tired of beating Maloney like a dozen eggs. We've recently learned that the GAFF, or GAF, has reached out to the Raging Roo's management and promotion firm, Emu and Emu, a division of the Cassowary Lobbying Group, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Hord and Raytites. And moving on to an even more disturbing story in the battle with the animals. From NPR. Why are scientists reanimating spider corpses re for research? For science. Necrospider bots at Rice University. It's like an elevator full of murder clowns. That's a big no. And one more good reason to stay out of Texas. Do you want zombie cyborg spiders? Because this, this is how you end up with zombie cyborg spiders. And speaking of zombies and terrible segues, zombie mortgages are back in the news. From ABC7, Zombie Mortgage, a nightmare for Carson couple facing threat of losing their home. Zombie mortgages are not the payment structure for a mausoleum with a locked door. They are lurking loans latently waiting that may have hypnotized you to forget that you ever saw it. So keep your eyes peeled and your bananas open because this is B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Yeah. And moving right along to videos show woman shooting inside Bristol Police Department lobby from NBC Connecticut. Attempted self cavorkianization gone terribly wrong makes cops question window quality. One of the officers was quoted as saying, Are these windows bulletproof? You had better hope so, sir. Makes you wonder if going with the construction company with the lowest bid was a good idea. Moving on to our next story from the Associated Press. Prosecutors say reckless driving suspect bit an NYPD officer's finger tip off. Not the kind of tip off that they meant. If man bites dog is news, then driver bites cop is definitely news. On the other hand, the officer still has four fingers and a thumb. The officer should have known better than to stick his finger anywhere near the mouth of a person who's led them on a car chase, crashed into other vehicles, and kept going. Only in New York. Gosh, I miss that old toddling town. And now for our next segment. From the Midwest to a great northern neighbor to the North, Canada. Red, white, but never blue, eh? What's up north? And from the Associated Press, Fat Bear Winner Grazer wins contest at Alaska National Park. 
We here at WBN and Nick Work Entertainment don't think that this contest is ethical. It promotes the objectification of bears' bodies and doesn't promote any sort of respect for their intellects. We plan on boycotting this event until the introduction of an interview and talent section. Thank you very much. And I'm not just saying that because Gaff has threatened the safety of my pickle farm. And now, on to our next segment. You've all been waiting for it. Why Florida, why? The segment where we inevitably ask, why Florida, why? Just, just, why? From Fox News 8, teacher accidentally shows Winnie the Pooh slasher movie. Only one violent scene was shown from the movie that's an uncomfortable reminder of the time you left your stuffed animal outside, but it reappeared on your pillow, all covered in leaves and sticks and mud. At least, you hoped that was mud. So much mud. Apparently, only one scary scene was enough to scare the fourth grade class into not sleeping until the end of high school. This, of course, brought criticism from the local community until they found out that it was actually a part of PragerU's curriculum against witchcraft and whimsy. Because PragerU is allowed to say anything they want in Florida schools, including using outright laws to indoctrinate children to believe that slavery didn't happen, or if it did, it wasn't as bad and had beneficial outcomes. And for our final story, moving on, we find ourselves asking the question, why do other states keep trying to emulate Florida? From Newsweek, Republican governor bans employees from using certain words. Arkansas governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders, no relation to Colonel Sanders that we know of, yet. But an unfortunate relation to Mike Huckabee. After introducing Youth Hiring Act and just this week helping create the Office of Agricultural Intelligence has moved on to banning the usage of certain words in official government documents or by government employees. Quoted as saying that these words are nonsense words used to erase women and girls, more importantly to erase their voices and experiences. Governor Sanders seems to have missed the inclusivity and voice that these terms actually achieve. If she didn't miss it on purpose, then she needs to work on her aim. Given her father's track record as an author, Governor Stifle may wish to direct her concerns over erasure elsewhere. One can only hope that her attentions next turn to the plight of the Northern Rosie Maple Mothman. Thank you for joining us, friends. I am, have been, and hopefully will again be your host, Trevor Stewart. And as they say around here, two up, two down, VA, double deuces. I'm out, y'all. And I feel the need to remind everybody that this is not a news show and I am not a journalist. And all of the express. Uh, let me try that again. <laughs> Let me start by reminding everybody that I am not a journalist. This is not a news show. And all the... Uh, pay, uh, pay, pay. Oops.
Sorry about that. Okay. Cut. <sighs> this evening, let's begin a story from... Little Kevy McCarthy had lost the confidence of the radical arm of his party for deigning to work with Democrats to avoid a shutdown of the government. <sighs> I'm gonna have to start that again. <laughs> I haven't seen two people lose a popularity contest like this since Ted Cruz and Ron DeSantis entered a wet t-shirt contest, and the real audience was the loser. <sighs> We've reached... <laughs> zombie mortgages are back in the news. From ABC7, zombie mortgage... No <sighs> and speaking of zombies... Video of, <clears throat> and moving right along to videos show woman shooting inside of Crystal. <clears throat> videos show woman shooting inside Bristol Police Department lobby from NBC Connecticut. In an attempted self-Kevorkianization gone wrong, <sighs> try one more time. I got this, I got this, I got this. <laughs> Videos show woman shooting inside Bristol. I ain't got this. We try again. Videos show woman shooting inside Bristol Police Department lobby, NBC, Connecticut. Attempted self cavorkinization gone terribly wrong makes quops question quendo quality. Quite. The officer should have known better than to stick his finger anywhere near the mouth of a person who's led them on a car ca car ca car car <laughs> car and on to our next segment, from the Midwest to our great neighbor up north. Let's try that one again. From the Midwest, from the Midwest to our northern neighbor. From the Midwest. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. One more time. End card. And don't forget. Since I did click that this, uh, that this broadcast has, uh, sponsored or unsponsored advertising, advertising in general, don't forget to go to the Jeffy Millimeter, uh, store, merch store. The, uh, Who's That Girl merch store? The Dassin underscore underscore merch store? And the Akika Calde merch store? All friends here at the channel. And that was the advertising portion. Let's try this next story again, shall we? After introducing... I really, when I read Youth Hiring Act, hiring is not the word that I see. And the word that I keep seeing, which could be associated with Sarah Huckabee Eyeliner, uh, does start with an H. But I can't say it on Twitch or YouTube. <laughs> 